the class of 2025 junior year scheduling information video. This presentation will cover the counseling team, important dates, high school requirements versus college eligibility requirements, typical 11th grade course load and important things to consider when selecting your courses, electives, CTE, AP and honors courses, balance versus burnout, important links and other information, and some frequently asked questions. Here is the AVHS Counseling Department. Mr. Moa has students with the last names A through CH. Ms. McAtee Ponce has students with the last names CI through HA. Ms. Pacheco has students with the last names HB through LA. Ms. Torres has students with the last names HB through OL. Ms. Maloney has students with the last name OM through SM. Ms. Tran has students with the last names SN through Z. Our amazing support counselor is Ms. Yu. We have a college and career counselor, Ms. Woodworth, who's at Yamador Tuesdays through Thursdays. Our registrar is Ms. Straub. Our ROP specialist is Ms. Wilson, and she works Monday through Thursdays from 9 to 2. You can find her in the counseling office in the Career Center. The counseling, we have two counseling secretaries. We have Ms. Strouch and Ms. Dial. Some upcoming important dates. Course selections in queue will be available for selection between February 1st and February 15th until midnight. Student and families will be able to enter and or edit course selections in queue in the Student Connect version of queue. You can make as many changes as you would like to your course selections between February 1st and February 15th. However, at February 15th at midnight, it locks in and you will not be able to make any changes in queue after that date. Um, if you have questions about courses or course selections, your counselors are here to help assist you. Um, we'll be putting on access workshops for students and question and answer sessions on the following dates, January 25th and 26th, February 1st, 2nd, 8th, 9th, and 15th. Counselors are going to be available in the MP to answer any questions that you have. Um, please sign up through FlexiSketch if you would like to attend. We're going to have an elective fair for students uh, rising 9th through 12th on January 23rd from 6 to 8 in the large gym. Teachers will be available to answer questions about their courses. We strongly encourage you to attend. Some additional important dates. Um, for rising 10th to be 12th graders, we're gonna, the counselors will be hosting a Q&A session, a question and answer sessions on Monday, January 23rd in the multi-purpose room. Um, the first session will go from 5 to 5.45, starting at 5.45 and going to 6.45 p.m. Session two will start at 6.55 and go to 7.55 p.m. If you're planning on attending the question and answer sessions, please fill out the link here. Your RSVP will help ensure us that we have enough space for everyone, and counselors will be available to answer course selection related questions. Um, we tried to time it so that if you wanted to go to the elective fair and talk to the teachers, you would have the opportunity to do that, and then you could come over to the question and answer session with the counselors if you had additional questions. There is a middle college information night, February 1st at 6.30 p.m. at Las Positas. Middle college is a program um, that is made up of students from Dublin, Livermore, and Pleasanton. Um, they're juniors and seniors, and they take all of their classes up at the community college. Students are grouped by grade level, so all the 11th graders would have junior English, U.S. History, and AVID 11 together, and then would select community college courses to complete their schedule. For 12th graders, very similar setup. So they take senior English, AVID 12, and Civics and Econ together as a 12th grade group, and then students take community college classes to complete their schedule based on their interests and needs. 
the, like I said, February 1st at 6.30 at Las Positas is going to be the information night if you want to find out more information about Middle College. As I said before, February 1st through the 15th is when students will be selecting their classes for next school year. Course selection confirming email is usually set, sent out to families in March. Um, and at that point in time, you'll have a chance to review your course selections and make adjustments to any um, errors or changes that you would like to make at that time. Graduation requirements and requirements for UCCSU. So for graduation, for history, social science, you need three and a half years or 35 credits in order to graduate from PUSD. Um, you need one semester of global studies, one year of world history, one year of US history, one semester of civics, and one semester of econ. Global studies is usually taken at the freshman level, world history is taken at the sophomore level, US history is taken at the junior level, and civics and econ is taken at the senior level. D grades do count for graduation, however, they do not count for college admissions. If you received an F in a course, that class and grade does not count for either graduation or for college admissions. For UCs and CSUs, UC stands for the University of California. University of California usually takes about the top 12.5% of high school seniors. Cal State universities usually take about the top one third of high school seniors. They require one year of world history and one year of US history for admissions. For graduation purposes, English, they require four years of English to graduate. For the UCs and CSUs, they also require four years of English for college admissions. For UCs and CSUs, they require that you earn a C minus or above to meet the requirement for a four-year college. For math, for PUSD, we require two years of math and one year must be the equivalent of algebra or a year of algebra. So if your student took algebra as an eighth grader and came in taking geometry their freshman year, they've met the algebra requirement already and then geometry and then if they go into Math 3 or Algebra 2 their sophomore year, that meets the two-year requirement. If you come in taking Algebra 1 as a freshman and then you go into Math 2 or Geometry, that would count as your two years of math, which meets the requirement for graduation. For the UCs and CSUs, they require three years and recommend four. They require Algebra 1, Geometry, Algebra 2, and Precalculus. If you do the math, sorry, the Algebra 1 and then the Math 2 through 4 series, you will meet the Algebra 1 Geometry and Algebra 2 minimum requirement for UCs and CSUs. Because the UCs and CSUs no longer require the SATs or ACTs for admissions, one of the criteria that they do look at is the level of math that a student completes and they also check to make sure that a student takes math their senior year. Something to keep in mind as you're planning ahead for your four years of high school. Science. For PUSD, we require one year of a life science, which at the entry level is biology, and one year of a physical science. So that could be earth and space science, could be chemistry, could be physics. UCs and CSUs, require two years and recommend three. One year of a life science with a lab, which would be biology. One year of a physical science with a lab, which would be earth and space science, chemistry, or physics. If you took conceptual physics, that also counts as the physical science with lab and also meets the physical science requirement for graduation. For graduation purposes, a student needs one year of either a language other than English or a year of a visual performing art or a year of career tech education. 
for the UCs and CSUs, they require two years of the same language and recommend three. Meaning, if a student came in with Spanish two, they're at, a, at Spanish two as a freshman, that would count as their second year of a language. And then if they went on their sophomore year and completed Spanish three, that would complete the third recommended year. Visual and performing arts. For graduation, you need either, like I said before, one year of a language other than English, or one year of a visual performing art, or one year of career technical education. For the UCs and CSUs, they do require, in addition to two years of the same world language, a year of a visual and performing art. For career tech education, as I said, you need one year of a career tech education course, or one year of a language other than English, or one year of a visual performing art that is not a requirement for UC CSUs. With that being said, many of the career and technical edu education classes are college prep and may fall under the college prep elective category. You can check this by going on the UC A through G list for Amador Valley High School. PE. Two years of PE are required for graduation. That is not a requirement for UCs and CSUs. Health, which you have taken uh, during your freshman year for one semester, is a requirement for graduation, not a requirement for UCs and CSUs. Uh, you need 80 elective credits in order to be eligible for graduation. And for UC CSUs, you need one year of a college prep elective. The one year of a college prep elective can be any um, college prep course that does not fall into any of the categories listed above, or it could also be an additional year of, say, math or science or world language. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so if you took pre cal or are taking pre cal, that could count as your college prep elective for UC CSUs. Or if you're taking a third year of a science or a third year of the same world language, that could count as your college prep elective or something that doesn't necessarily fall into those categories, such as AVID or journalism or publications. Those classes would also meet the college prep elective category. You need 230 credits in order to graduate. You need 15 courses um, required for the UCs and CSUs, and you get that just by counting down to history, four English, three math, and so on. Grades uh, for graduation, you have to earn a D minus or above for UC CSUs. Your grades have to be a C minus or better for the course to count for college admissions. If you received a D or F in a course and you need to make it up for graduation and or for UCCSU eligibility. Letters will be going out soon to students who, um, for students to enroll in the Saturday Academy program. There'll also be summer school opportunities available for students to sign up through our summer school program. Information about summer school is usually sent out in April, so keep your eyes open for that information. There is no testing requirement to graduate from PUSD. There is no longer any testing requirement for UCs or CSUs. They will not look at or consider SAT or ACT scores for college admissions. There is a community service requirement for graduation. You have to complete 20 hours of community, community service throughout your time in high school. For UCs and CSUs, they do not require community service. However, a lot of colleges would expect you to complete community service hours. Typical 11th grade course load. So 11th graders are required to take 11th grade English, US history. Most of them are taking the next level of math. Students may be starting their um, language other than English or and or world language, um, or you might be taking a third year. 
Students might be taking science or an elective like a CTA, CTE course or VAPA, Visual and Performing Art, maybe PE or another elective. Here are your English options in 11th grade. For junior English, there is the college prep option. Um, here are a list of some of the novels that they will be reading for that course. It is a college prep course and it does count for college admissions and for graduation. African American literature. So you're reading books written by African American authors. This course is college prep and does count for graduation and also for college admissions eligibility. AP English. AP English is um, a college level course. That course has a weighted GPA, meaning that for a college prep course, if you got an A, the GPA would be worth four points. An A in an AP course is worth five points. There is a AP test that students can take in May of that year. And um, the AP test is scored out of five. If a student receives a three, four, or five, that's considered passing. And colleges like to see that the student took the AP test regardless of whether they passed the AP test or not. But if you pass the test, that determines how many credits you would earn for a particular college for that particular course. U.S. History. U.S. History, you have two options. The first is college prep U.S. History. Homework for this class is reading around um, 10 to 8 to 10 pages nightly. They have a couple events where they have dress up days where students get to participate. Um, they, you're going to read, take notes from lectures, have classwork, homework projects, final exams, tests and quizzes. Um, the College Prep U.S. History course counts for graduation, as well as for um, college admissions eligibility. AP U.S. History, um, affectionately called APUSH, if you ever hear a student refer to it as APUSH, um, is also a college-level course, similar to AP English. Um, you get the higher-weighted GPA. There's an AP test that students would take in May to determine if they earn college credits for the course, um, just like AP Junior English. Um, the course counts for graduation and for college admissions eligibility. Here are your math options. So as a 10th grader, if you are in Math 2, um, next year you can take Math 3, and as I said previously, the Math 2, 3, and 4 cover Geometry, Algebra 2. Um, ma math 3 covers the first half of Algebra 2. Math 4 covers the second half of Algebra 2. So if you go Algebra, Math 2, Math 3, Math 4, you will meet the minimum criteria for, sorry, the, the minimum requirement for math for UCs and CSUs admissions. If you are taking geometry this year, next year you can go into Algebra 2. You could do Math 3 if you feel like you need a slower paced Algebra 2, or you could look at going into Honors Algebra 2. If you are in Course 1 this year, which covers a year of geometry and the first half of Algebra 2, you can enroll in um, Course 2, which is the second half of Algebra 2 and Pre-Cal. Or if you need to level down, you would go into the Algebra 2 class. If you're in Algebra 2 or Honors Algebra 2, you would enroll in either Pre-Cal or Honors Pre-Cal. And then if you're in Honors Pre-Cal this year, you would have, you probably would be going into AP Calc BC, although you also have the option of AP Calc AB. AB covers a semester of college calculus, and BC covers a full year of college calculus. So I kind of already went over this. Um, again, your options are Math 3, Algebra 2, Honors Algebra 2, 
Course 2, Pre-Cal, Honors Pre-Cal, Calculus, which is a college prep um, calculus course. It does not receive the weighted um, GPA. It's not an AP course, and it does not have a test for students to take in May. It also is not weighted. Um, science options. So you can take biology, which is usually the entry level life science course. We have our um, biomed uh, project lead the way courses that have to be taken in sequence. So you would start out with the principles of biomed science. Then you could take the honors human body systems and then honors medical interventions. Um, AP bio is an option after you've taken biology, zoology, uh, anatomy, and physiology. And then we have the AP environmental science, which is a two period course. Um, and it's paired with environmental field science. Um, so one period is considered AP, and then the environmental field science period is a college prep class. Physical science options. So again, if you had taken conceptual physics, we don't offer that um, starting this year, but that did count as physical science for graduation and for four-year college admission. So if you've taken that, you've met the physical science requirement. Um, of our current courses, the other classes that count for physical science are earth and space science, chemistry, physics, AP chem, and AP physics. Um, check to see if there are any prereqs. Um, I think the chem and physics have certain recommendations in terms of math completion. Um, so try and keep an eye on that when you're making your selections for next school year. Elective options. So why are elective options just as important as core requirements? This is an, a chance for students to take a class in something that they haven't had a chance to yet that they might have an interest in, or they might be considering a career in a certain area and now's a good time for them to take that course to see if that is something they're interested in, or if it's not actually something that they are interested in, then they'll know that at an early age and then, um, can look at exploring other areas of interest. Plus, they're fun. So many choices. So um, you could be looking at a language other than English or a world language. Our options are um, ASL or American Sign Language, uh, Chinese, which is Mandarin, French, Korean, and Spanish. And it looks like we're missing Japanese. So I'll make sure I'll add that to the sheet. That's another course that we take, we offer. Um, English, creative writing, debate, journalism, yearbook, which is called publications. Those are all courses you can take. For the visual and performing art, we have art, digital arts, drama, band, choir, orchestra, photography, theater production, ceramics, video production, and more. Um, starting this year, you're eligible to take some of the ROP courses. Some of them are offered here at Amador. Some of them are offered at Dublin and Livermore, so you'll, you'll just have to check to see the class that you're interested in and see where it's offered. So sometimes our students have to travel to take those courses. Some of them are one period and some of them are two periods. Um, we have Ms. Wilson in the College and Career Center if you have any specific questions regarding ROP. Um, we also have our CTE, our career tech education courses as well. So we have computer science, culinary skills, Intra engineering, um, which is also a project lead the way program where courses need to be taken in a particular sequence, sequence, intro to criminal justice, sports med, and more. And then other classes would be um, that may not fall into those categories would be leadership, which you do need to apply for. Uh, you can check with Mr. Weber to see what the timeline is on that. Um, AVID typically. We don't take a lot of kids at the sophomore or junior level, but if you do have an interest in adding into AVID, you can reach out to either Mrs. Heller or myself, Ms. Pacheco, and um, we usually do interviews and applications on a case-by-case -case basis. Uh, TAs, so if you want to be a teacher assistant, you're eligible for that starting your junior year as well. Um, LinkedIn here, um, you can see 
This is a link to the 11th grade course selection sheet so you can see all the choices that are available to you. And then this is a link to all the video um, description of courses that the teachers at Amador have put together for you to view. New courses. So work experience actually was a new course offered this year, but I felt like we didn't um, get a chance to advertise it about it. So I wanted to make sure that we mentioned it this year. So work experience, if you're interested in doing that, excuse me, it's a course that's actually offered through PVA or Pleasanton Virtual Academy. Um, linked in here is a video that's a general overview and the website. Excuse me, there's also a form that you would need to complete um, if you're interested in getting credits for working. Um, there's also a student board member course, so you would need to apply to be a student on the PUSD school board. If you were selected, you would have the option of enrolling into that course and receiving credit. Um, a new course offered next year here at Amador is the Advanced Computer Science for Con Contemporary for the Contemporary World. Sorry. Um, this course can be taken after completing AP Computer Science. So if you've already taken Computer Science and you want to take an additional course, um, it sounds like it's more project-based. You can talk to Mr. Kiyoe about it. He is the one offering the course. Um, on the course selection sheet, you'll notice it has an XP next to it. XP just means that um, it's pending. You see approval for a college prep class. That's true for any time we have a new course that we're offering. It has to go through the UC for approval. Um, that you sh The window to submit courses doesn't open until February, so we don't have that information for you yet. But if for some reason it's not approved, um, we would find out about that before the school year started and we would let you know. Um, but assume that it will be approved as a college prep class um, unless you hear differently from us. So career tech education, um, this just talks a little bit about the career tech pathways, which is essentially taking classes um, that would fall in the area of career that you are interested in. Um, you can see a list of the different pathways in the column to the right. Um, so if you have an interest in learning more about a particular area or a particular field, um, then you would want to select some courses in that area um, so that you can have more experience and find out more about particular jobs um, in that particular field. Honors and AP courses. So what's the difference between the two? Honors courses are more rigorous than college prep courses, but are not considered college level like AP courses. Some honors courses do not have an AP GPA boost. However, colleges will take into consideration the increase in rigor. The way you can figure out if an honors course is weighted or not, if it has a P next to the title, it's not weighted. If it has an HP next to the title, it does. Um, so sophomore English, I'm sorry, honors sophomore English, Honors Freshman English, Honors Global, Honors World, none of those are uh, weighted. Um, the one, some of the ones that are would be Honors Pre-Cal is a weighted honors course. Honors French 5 is weighted. Honors We the People is weighted. Um, some of the Engineering Pathway courses um, are weighted. And... Honors Japanese 5s weighted. So we don't have a ton. We have some. Um, and again, there are, you can check to see if it has an HP next to the title. The other way you can find out is if you go on our UC A through G list, it will indicate which classes count as, sorry, which classes receive the extra GPA boost um, that are honors courses. AP courses stands for Advanced Placement. These courses are designed by College Board, who also um, oversees the SATs. Uh, they're fast-paced and rigorous. They're college level. Um, a C minus or better in the AP courses gets an extra grade point um, in the GPA calculation. And there is that 
AP exam in May that students usually take. Um, UC and CSU only factor in eight semester four year long classes um, of weighted courses in their GPA calculation for eligibility. How do I sign up to be a TA? So if you want to be a TA, go ahead and sign up for six classes. And then when we come back from summer break, you can come pick up a TA form for counseling, um, find a teacher you want a TA for, get their signature, get your parent's signature, and then drop off the form um, to the front desk in the counseling department. Middle college we talked a little bit about already. Um, there is, like I said before, the middle college night for um, Pleasanton Unified um, is Wednesday, February 1st at 6.30 at Las Positas. Um, if you click on here, there's a flyer that pops up that has some additional information. Um, middle College's website is on the ROP site, so um, you can get more information about that as well. Um, benefits of Middle College. Um, so you can go ahead and start taking classes, community college classes that you're interested in and starting to earn college credits. Um, it's fun being on the community college campus. If you feel like you're ready to start your college career, that might be, um, a good program for you to be involved in. When you're selecting your classes for next year, make sure you don't burn yourself out. So we want to make sure that you're balancing extracurricular activities, your academics, your personal life, so your friends, your family. Um, there's only so many hours in the day. So we want to make sure that you're taking all of that into account when you're selecting your courses for next school year. Um, and so think about how you've done in the past year and a half in high school. Um, in terms of level of difficulty, do you feel like your classes have been about right? Do you feel like they were too easy and you can maybe take on an, an AP course? Or do they feel like um, maybe I took on too much and I need to lighten my load a little bit? So you can use that as a gauge to decide how you want to select your classes for this year. Again, think about what commitments you already have and what you're participating in. You know, colleges want to see you involved in two or three activities and see you consistently involved. They don't expect you to be involved in like 10 different things that's just not manageable or doable. Um, and within those two or three activities, they want to see that you're taking on a leadership role um, and consistently involved. So don't overdo it um, and try and find things that you're interested in participating in. If you tried something and it's not a good fit, you can try something else. Um, that's okay. Colleges know that as we grow, um, something might have been interesting to us our freshman year and maybe not our junior year. So um, make sure that you keep that in mind as you're joining different sports um, and clubs and other extracurricular activities. Um, and then some questions you might want to ask yourself about what do I like about school? If I take one less rigorous course, will my grades improve? What are my priorities? What am I willing to sacrifice in terms of time? So again, there's only so many hours in the day and we want to make sure that you're getting enough sleep and enough rest. We want, um, well-rounded, happy, um, well-adjusted students and people. So um, this is just an example of how, you know, if ideally you're being consistently successful and things are going well from year to year, but we know, um, you know, sometimes you try something and it doesn't work out as well as you had hoped. Um, and so we're trying to encourage students and families just to think about, you know, what's gone well. Um, and what would be the right fit for my child in terms of selecting courses for the following um, for the following school year? Um, as you are um, going through and selecting your courses, just keep in mind of your four-year plan. Um, we want to make sure that you have 
time to get in all of the courses that you need for graduation and for for your college um, so that you're eligible to apply for the school that you want to apply to. And then just in terms of transcript and college admissions, uh, colleges like to see five academic courses. So that does give you a little bit of flexibility for your sixth course, whether that would be like maybe like a PE course um, or a TA or something that maybe isn't necessarily as rigorous, something that you might um, have an interest in taking or pursuing. Um, I feel like we already talked about balancing load and trends. And then um, to show the college of a course that you might be interested in. Getting help. So let's say you have some questions about your course selections. So one thing you could do is sign up for access um, and the dates are included at the beginning. So it's basically the last week of January and the first two weeks of February and the 15th. Um, will be available during access to answer any questions. You can sign up in FlexiSchedge under Counseling Department if you're interested in attending. Of course, you can request an appointment with your counselor. And then also you can email your counselor or drop in during brunch or lunch or after school if we don't have a meeting. Um, if you have a quick question, we're happy to um, be available to answer student questions at that time as well. Um, the College and Career Center is also available. That's located in the Counseling Department. Um, Ms. Wilson is there on Monday through Thursdays, 9 to 2. And um, she is also the ROP uh, representative. So if you have questions about ROP classes, she would be a great a resource for you to go to and get your questions answered. She also has information about um, scholarship information Anything that we get from uh, different colleges about summer programs, we post in the College and Career Center website. So make sure you have a chance to look at that and see what kinds of opportunities are available for you. Um, she also um, organizes career fairs and college fairs. Um, the colleges have been out at lunch on the quad, um, kind of down by the MP. So if you want information from the colleges or you just want to find out a little bit more about that a little bit more information about that college then you can go ahead and walk over during lunchtime to their booth and get your um, questions answered we also have our social and emotional support counselor who's amazing miss you um, she's available uh, for drop-ins or for appointments um, for any student that needs additional social and emotional support and then some, here are some helpful resources and links. Um, scheduling information. So um, that information will be, this is general information about um, scheduling and counseling. Program guide will be linked in here soon. Um, the district office is just putting some finishing touches on the program guide. Here's a link for the course selection sheet. Here's a link for the course description videos, and then there's a four-year plan template if you want to um, create or update your four-year plan. Um, just a reminder, students will be selecting their courses from February 1st to February 15th in student queue. And then just to review important dates, again, the selection window is February 1st through the 15th. Um, here are the dates, again, of the access workshops. Go ahead and sign up. Students can sign up during FlexiSchedge to meet with us, um, get their questions answered. And then the elective fair, if you want to meet with teachers and hear about their courses, ask your questions about the courses, um, is on January 23rd from 6 to 8 p.m. in the large gym. And then we will be, the counselors will be doing our question and answers in the MP that same night. We start a little bit earlier, so 5.45 to 6.45 session one, and then 6.55 to 7.55 is session two. Um, we do ask that you RSVP. Um, that way we know that um, we have enough space for everybody. The Middle College Information Night, again, is February 1st at 6.30 at Las Positas. And then course selections confirming email will be sent out probably in March. Um, just to confirm your course selections for the school year. And then if there is an error or you need to make a change, then um, you would follow the steps on that email at that time. Thank you so much for 
listening to the video and just a reminder that the counselors are here to help support you through this process. Have a great day.